Hello, everybody, and welcome to Slash Tracks Action News. My name is Alex Vanover, and with me, as always, the 80 Slasher Librarian, Mr. Josh LaRue. How you doing tonight, Josh? I'm doing fantastic, Alex. Thanks for asking. <laughs> that's great, man. You know, what's even better is you didn't in- fucking interrupt me this time, so that's good. I sure didn't. All right. Let's, you got you can't walk no line. You know that? You can't walk no line, Josh LaRue. I can I can snort one, but I can't walk one. <laughs> you can't walk no line, Josh LaRue. You say you love me. You say you love the show. You can't walk no line. <laughs> hey, uh, so first thing I want to do is I want to wish the mini 80s slasher librarian a uh, happiest of happy 15th birthday. So if you guys don't know who he is, uh, it's Josh's son, Anthony. He plays the Rodeo Clown. And on the most recent episode of Slash Tracks, the St. Paddy's Day special, he actually played me. And he did a better job playing me than I do playing me on that show. So, happy birthday, Anthony. I hope you had an amazing day. He sure did. And the cake was delicious. Yeah, well, that did look delicious. Was that fondant or was that like straight old school icing? Just buttercream frosting. We got oh, this little uh, bakery. That we go to for all, it's, it's been a tradition for all their birthdays. They always pick a picture and they do like an edible print on top. Yeah. And there's been some weird shit. Like one year my daughter wanted Jason on there, like with Pamela's head. And I'm like, you know, this is like a religious bakery place. And <laughs> so we sent them some pretty weird stuff. Oh, uh, what? Good, they should just they be like... Make- <laughs> so what they should just be like thank you josh uh for the 50 dollars. you know we appreciate the business uh come again what did they're not gonna put jesus on every cake i mean i don't understand <laughs> have a blessed day <laughs> yeah god, god bless uh, enjoy your cake because isn't eating cake a sin too like if it's not like if you eat too much of it isn't everything a sin basically <laughs> that's only if you have your cake and eat it too so you can have the cake just don't dare eat it it should be you can't eat your cake and have it, too. You know, because you, you can have a cake and eat it and still yeah. have some cake left over. But if you eat the fucker, yeah. you can't have it. You know, it's kind of like uh, you made your bed and now lie in it. it don't, yeah. don't you think that it, it makes more sense to say you laid in your bed, now make it? Like, straighten it back up, you made a mess of it, now get it nice and tidy again? Yes, but... On that same kind of making your bed or not making your bed thing, I think I've made my bed probably 10 times in my entire life. Right. And and I was probably told to do it. I don't understand. You're going to get in that fucker later that night and ruin it again. It's just one of those things that I understand that it's like the military uh, tells you to start. If you want to fix your life, start with making your bed because it's like (laughs) consistency and discipline. But it's like you just I don't know. It's like. You're just going to get back in it again and ru- I don't know. What are you, what's your thoughts? My mom was the kind of mom that like two hours before bedtime, make your bed. What? Two hours before bedtime. <laughs> what? Two I hours told you before, to do it earlier. Two hours before you make dinner, make, do the dishes. Huh. I'll be lucky to have sheets on the bed at this point. So oh, eh, it's popped off the corner. Just leave it alone. Yeah. Back in my, partying days i had a bad reputation for sleeping on uh like sheetless mattresses all the time because i just come home blacked out i just whatever wherever i've passed out you know i it's not like i was trying to fold a fitted sheet or like put the sheet on my bed when i had just got done pounding jaeger bombs till like three o'clock in the morning that was the least of my worries when i got home (laughs) i just wanted to find a place to pass out and not die in all fairness i probably would be better disciplined at making my bed but I actually went to military school in my teenage years, and I was off to a good start, but then this killer doll showed up from my childhood, but instead of coming after Mm -hmm. me, he went after this younger cadet, and it just fucked up my whole military academy thing, Mm. so... Well, that Never sounds really familiar. Sure. That almost sounds like the plot of an episode of Slash Tracks that we did. That almost that that almost sounds like Child's Play three. Oh, huh. is, it, is there is that a movie? There's a movie like that. Okay. Well, unless it was based off your fucking life, are you are you Andy <laughs> Barkley? I'm under assumed identity. Andy Slasher Librarian. 
the government did a great job there. They're like, we're going to put you in the witness protection program and make you a visible public person every day. <laughs> Good call. Way to go. They're like, we'll, we'll hide him. We'll hide him in the most. We'll hide him in a place no one would ever think to look. His YouTube channel. <laughs> Hey, it worked until this week. It worked until this week. Numbers, yeah. are, numbers are in an all-time high. People are really enjoying Slash Tracks and Slash Tracks Action News. Uh, our, our views are way up, and thank you for that. Even the latest episode of Out of Print Slashers uh, is at an all-time high. So it's been a great week. Halloween, right. the unabridged audio book. Man, 27,000 views. Uh, good shit. Good shit. Very good week. The Slash Tracks, the most popular Slash Tracks episode is Freddy's Revenge, which was episode 25, right? Mm -hmm. Two episodes ago. Uh, The new one, The Leprechaun in Space, uh, is at 1,800 views in eight days. And making its way back up to Slash Tracks (laughs) charts out of fucking nowhere, (laughs) Monster Brawl is almost to 900 views when it was literally at, like, 290 views for the last year. Santa's so Josh Slang is up, yeah. too. And that one was pretty low. Wow, even out of the holiday season, it's making its way back up the charts. But Josh and I want to take this moment on Slash Tracks Action <laughs> News to uh, actually make a very public apology. Now that people actually watch Slash Tracks and Slash Tracks News, we want all you new Slashaholics, we're very sorry that you had to watch Monster Brawl. We yes. did, too. And it was even less fun for us. So we apologize to all 800 of you guys that had to watch it this week. That one was so bad. It was like trying to watch an AWA pay-per-view in its last year. It was uh, really bad. Like WCW Nitro, like the last couple months where they're like Booker T and like Buff the Stuff Bagwell and like Scott Steiner were the only people who were like main eventing anything <laughs> at the end there. Like the... Uh, the- the box is on a pole and the belt falls out of the box that's supposed to be the secret box or anything that Impact is doing right now. We're going to uh, put... It's pretty bad. We're going to put Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Canyon. Or, where I don't know, wherever he went. Chris Canyon is has passed away. And Chris Canyon, uh, one of the first openly gay wrestlers ever, so major bravery there. And... There's a really good episode of Dark Side of the Ring about Chris Canyon. So if you guys haven't seen that, it's on Vice, uh, and it goes into his backstory and how influential he was into a lot of people's uh, careers. So he had, he did a lot of stuff. He was inf- he influenced a lot of wrestlers today. So yeah, Chris Canyon, you're missed, buddy. He's a, he was a good seller too. I was uh, in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, at the it was uh, Slambury '99, I believe, or Slambury '2000. The year that Hulk Hogan was coming out in the FUNB shirt, and he was Terry Bollea, and he fought Kidman. They had a That's triple. like ninety nine. Yeah, ninety nine. They, they had a triple cage match with David Arquette defending the title, and Canyon got thrown off of like the second cage. And we had seen them setting up the stage, the walkway before the show started. And we saw them put like this one piece in. We're like somebody's going to land on that. That's that looks different than the rest of it. He missed it by like four inches, I think. Oh my gosh! And we thought he was dead, man. So he sold that pretty good because apparently he didn't get you know really bad hurt. But uh, I can tell you from eyewitness view, he did not hit the mark the way he was supposed to. So he was very lucky on that. So he didn't hit the gimmicked part of the cage. He hit the actual part of the cage that's not supposed to be jumped on. Of the walkway, yeah, of he was walk- thrown off the cage onto the walkway. Yeah, he's lucky he's not dead. If he landed on the wrong part. Well, he is he's dead, lucky, but... He's lucky he wasn't dead before he died. <laughs> exactly, on. yeah. We, we thought we thought he was dead because we watched him set it up, and then he, like, kind of missed it. So, uh, I guess he tucked his chin. Good bump. Good bump. Good for him, man. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, hey, before we get into fun facts, someone who didn't tuck their chin, Biggie from WWE... Uh, the new day. You saw that he broke his neck, right? Like two weeks no, ago, he no. broke his neck. Yeah, he's he's hurt bad. Um, he's he's going to be on the shelf maybe forever. I hate to hear that. Edge was supposed to be too, but he's back. So yeah, yeah but that was dude. Edge didn't come back for like ten or fifteen years. 
but Big E, they're saying like it was so bad that if he wasn't such a just beast with like huge neck muscles and lap muscles, he probably would have died. Man, he's just such that. a massive specimen of just a like huge buff guy. That's probably the only thing that saved him. Was he wrestling Seth Rollins at the time? No, he was. You know, he was wrestling a newer guy, kind of a green guy. In wrestling, if you're newer, they call it green. Seth and Rollins. He, no, he was trying oh. to. This guy was trying to do a belly to belly suplex, and it just looked like he didn't get him turned all the way. Um, it didn't look like he was strong enough to do it to Biggie in the first place, and it looked like he was trying to like lift him from a standing position as opposed to like a squatted position like where you can get some leverage and get the turn over the top yeah and biggie just spiked his head on the mat instead of rolling you know it was it oh my gosh it looked bad so i hope biggie has a full recovery and i hope he's wrestling again but if he doesn't want to wrestle again i hope he's successful in whatever he does in the future because he's hilarious he's he's got a really good social media presence he's funny he's got a big old chest too man i went to a live show before covid they performed uh they came and wrestled at uh in eugene and where the oregon ducks play basketball and biggie was there and biggie was doing some crazy stuff man he was he was able to like you know like when you were a kid and you go to the skating rink and you do the limbo to like try to to win a prize Mm -hmm. he was basically doing the limbo in the ring just standing and bending over he he's he's like a gymnast or something Uh he's incredibly flexible did they ever put the belt on him before? Yeah, this? he was the champ. Yeah, he was the champion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that's good because he got his he got his shot, and he might not get another one. So we did hope Brock that Lesnar happened. beat him in four seconds to get it back. I think Brock. I think Brock Lesnar did beat him. So they're just like feeding the new day one by one. Give give the new day the belt. Feed him to Brock Lesnar. It wasn't as bad. Take their championship. It wasn't as bad as what they did to Kofi. What they did to Kofi was embarrassing. They just they had Kofi be the champion. For quite a while, and then Brock Lesnar shows up, and he he beat Kofi in like less than a minute. Uh, that I tried getting back into it, and that's one of the things that turned me away from it. AEW is something I'm, I've got a lot of interest in. I'm going to try to start watching some of that. So, AEW's got a lot of really good workers. Um, Daniel Bryan's there, or Brian Danielson now because he's using his real name. CM Punk, um, John Moxley, who used to be Dean Ambrose, Sting. Darby Allen, uh, Chris Jericho, and Chris Jericho, actually, I just saw some uh, photos of him recently. It looks like he's lost like 40 pounds. He looks very fit again. So hopefully he's rededicated himself to wrestling because he was uh, kind of out of shape there for a little bit. I mean, out of shape for Chris Jericho, but not for an average human being. Yeah. But he looks great now. He looks fantastic. So that's exciting. And AEW has a product that you can tell that the wrestlers have some freedom and what they're like, their storylines and what they're able to say in promos. And you can just feel the excitement coming through the TV. Yeah. Whereas with WWE to me, I've been watching it since I was a child. It just feels so overly scripted and they just have these bad comedy writers writing promos for these guys. <laughs> they're saying stuff in lines that don't, they don't, they're not natural that you wouldn't say in real life. Everything seems forced. It's just it's just a really gross and overproduced product, and it's turning off a lot of people. They're so lucky that they have the TV deals and the Saudi money and all this other stuff because they would be fucked if they didn't have these these deals. Yeah, there's no there's no stakes. There's no characters. There's just Mm-mm. and they fired pretty much everybody, including his own son. So the, and that wasn't a work. That happened. They actually got rid. Mm-hmm. They actually fired. Vince actually fired Shane non TV. Like it was off screen. The only people that know about it are the people that read about it. He just wasn't on on anymore after the Royal Rumble. <laughs> he was fired. He's a, he's a hell of a worker. I wish he could have got the belt once. Shane. Shane McMahon. You wanted him to have the belt. Yeah, I think he's a he's a hell of a worker, man. He's a hell of a worker and an entertainer. And he shouldn't be punished just because of his last name. He should have got the belt once. Even if he lost it immediately, uh, just just because he he's really good when he gets out there and does his job. So, well, you know what else is really good. You know what else is really good, Josh? 
Our first news story. What do we no. got? Oh. Fun facts on on Slash Tracks Action News are really good, and we're going to get into it right now. What do we got? All right. Walt Disney, Mr. Mickey Mouse himself, gave his housekeeper, Telma Howard, Disney stocks every year for the holidays. At the age of 79, Telma died a multimillionaire. Well, Walt Disney's not such a bad guy. Still a bad guy, but that was... Uh... It's pretty awesome, though. I don't think Walt Disney was a bad guy. I think what Disney has become since his death, right? Because it's a, it's they're buying every property: Star Wars, freaking Marvel, uh, and they're turning it into some of the stuff is very good, and some of it is not so good. They're it's like a I, monopoly on the entertainment industry. I just meant all the like the rumors and stuff of him being an anti-Semite and racist and all that. Um, back in the day. Allegedly. Josh. Allegedly. Never been proven in a court of law. Well, so. we need to get we need to get his housekeeper on Slash Tracks Action News and ask her what she thinks about him. I think her opinion would be a little bit different <laughs> than yours. What do you think? I would bet $79 million that it would be a good opinion. You know, I can't believe that you'd besmirch Walt's name like that on our show. Especially now that we're gaining traction. All the Disney viewers that are slash trackaholics now, you just you just ruined it. You pissed all over it. Way to go, bud. <laughs> Disney covers everything, Fox. Everything. Well, thanks. I, we we're probably owned by Disney, and we don't even know it yet. <laughs> Your YouTube channel by. is owned by Disney, and you just fucked everything up. Way to go! You can pal. watch every episode of Slash Tracks, Slash Tracks Action News, and the upcoming Slash Tracks Review Show on Disney Plus. <laughs> 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 on Disney Plus. Hey, um, we'll see. Hey, we're going off on a tangent real quick before the next fun fact. Josh, tell the viewers the big news about Slash Tracks. Where you found us on the internet? Where yeah, were we just, included? On the fandom, the Wikipedia fandom thing. Everybody's got every every show has got their own site like this, and there is a uh, thing that's like shows that are like Mystery Science Theater, like. Uh, recommendations if you're a fan and right there in the S is slash tracks network with a link to the channel. Uh, I thought that was yeah, pretty that's... fucking awesome. Whoever that, put us there. Thank you. That is pretty fucking awesome. And the views of the episodes are going up. We're included in that. We were featured uh, when we interviewed Ira Hyden on bloody disgusting and cinemasker Darcy, the male girl from Joe, ba- Joe Bob and the last drive in has retweeted us multiple times. It seems like it seems like all this stuff is starting to kind of like the snowballs rolling down the hill and it's like really exciting. Did you say Cinemassacre? Cinemassacre did did the also did the story, didn't they? Bloody disgusting and then Cinemassacre also posted oh, the story. Yeah, gotcha, 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 gotcha. What were you where were you going with? What what, what was I, that? I thought you were talking about like the angry video game nerd and stuff said something. It was another website like uh, Bloody Disgusting. I got what you meant. No, there was two. I don't know who the second was. It Cinemassacre, the second one. I don't know that posted that. the story. It's like it's like they poached the story from Bloody Disgusting. Yeah, it's, it's and reposted it. <laughs> I don't give a shit who posted it. Just as long Thank as they you. get us out there, I don't care. Yeah, we were the first ones to break that. Ira, Ira Hyden was uh, voicing some of the uh, mini Stay Puffs in Ghostbusters Afterlife. So yeah, yeah, what the news that matters right here. We broke nationwide news right there, and that's why we're trusted. We're number one. We're your horror, sports, fun facts, headlines. We are the site, the show to trust. As long as Josh has that beautiful head of hair, we will continue to thrive and go on for years and years. Dude. You heard the music at the beginning after the theme song. That's definitely newsy music, right? We're, we're news. Yeah, it's legit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and um, we even tried an actual news opening today, and we had to do it a couple times because Josh spoke over me (laughs) and totally took me out of my rhythm because Josh is like, I got this idea. Let's introduce it really campy. So I was like, "Ah, I don't think so. So what do I do? I say no, and then I do it. So then Josh thinks I'm going to let him you know, speak, but I'm a big idiot, and then I speak over him. (laughs) And then just – so that was like the third time we tried to do the episode. (laughs) Like – I blew it, so I want to go on record and say, Josh, I'm sorry. 
And I want to go on record and say, Alex, I'm sorry. Right. And this has been Josh LaRue with Slash Tracks Action News 4. Back <laughs> hey, to uh, you, Alex. All right, back to me. Fun fact number two. Uh, world-renowned inventor Thomas Edison was so upset with his son's uh, ineptitude in business that he actually offered his son $35 per week if his son would simply change his last name. Wow. Yeah. That's all it takes? Well, that was back in the freaking late 1800s. I'm sure $35 a week was quite a bit. How bad do you got to be for your your old man to be like, look, I'll just pay you to tell people you're not my kid. Yeah, just do not use my last name. Here's $35. Uh, Also, uh, get the hell out of here. You're embarrassing me. You've ruined the name. I invented the fucking light bulb. Uh, I have thousands of patents under my name. But you know what? This poor kid is trying to live up to the family name, and he obviously can't. And instead of helping him and encouraging him on the right path, old Thomas is shitting all over uh, this kid's dreams. I think that's ridiculous. 35 bucks isn't enough. I'd tell, I'd tell Thomas to take that 35 bucks and shove it straight up his asshole. $36 and we're talking. Yeah. Listen, $35, I'm not going to sell out my, my name for that. Now, if you give me 36 or $37, the whole different ballgame. Yakety yak, don't talk back. Dude, I heard that Thomas Edison um, was very Walt Disney-ish. Uh, according to your view of Walt Disney. Not that he was like racist or anything. I just heard that he like lied about a lot of the stuff he did like he didn't actually and like he ripped people's ideas off and like stole stuff like i i've heard negative things about thomas edison like he was kind of a fraud yeah, i've heard, you heard little... anything about that yeah um, i've heard that he was just a patent clerk type person and uh just just stole other people's ideas yeah, yeah. i'd heard that yeah so who knows man um if we ever get a hot tub time machine, that'll definitely be one of the first places that we record a new episode from. Well, when Slash Tracks News investigates Thomas Edison in the hot tub time machine, and we'll go back in time and we'll see if if he really invented those things or if he was just a dirty, rotten thief. And we'll go tell Tesla to stick up for himself sometimes. Yeah, we'll do all those things. Uh, but the next thing we need to do, we need to get into fun fact number three. Fun fact number three. In 1916, a constitutional amendment was proposed to Congress that would, have, that would have put all acts of war to a nationwide vote. Anyone who voted in favor of war would also have to volunteer for service in the Army. Okay. I'm all for that. I think that's really interesting. Yeah. 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 You want to go to uh, war? Here's your rifle. <laughs> I think Vietnam would have been a, a lot different situation had we had that amendment. I think a lot of things would be a lot different. I think, I mean, a lot of these politicians in the past and even nowadays, they just move American citizens around like they're pieces on a risk board or something. Like it's not actual human beings that they're putting into ridiculous situations for no for just political bullshit. Are you trying to tell me that there's politicians in this world? Okay. That are not completely honest. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dude, uh, speaking of Donald Trump, uh, Ryan Thomas Johnson, the guy who writes the theme for the Slash Tracks uh, show, he posted on his Twitter yesterday. He said, you know, shit's getting real serious when the McDonald's flag is flying at half mast. So I posted a picture of Donald Trump having a full on conversation with the Grimace from McDonald's. Yeah. He, he's trying to get he's trying to get the Ronald McDonald House. He couldn't get the House of Representatives on his side, so he's going to get the Ronald McDonald House to help him overturn, uh, you know, a two and a half year old election. <laughs> so. Dude, and, uh, can I can I can I bring up a fun fact for you? Yeah. Um, I'm uh, Mo, uh, Representative Mo Brooks, who was a big supporter of Trump's through all the bullshit. All the you know the fake the fake shit about all the fraud and everything. Finally had enough. <laughs> this dude literally his Twitter handle was uh, Mo Brooks uh, uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, endorsed by Donald Trump. That was his like tag. Uh, finally spoke out saying that enough is enough. Let it go. You lost. And he went on the news and said up until just like a week ago, Donald Trump was still begging him to help him find a way to get back into the White House now. Like even to this day, Trump thinks that there's some magical way that he can just kick Biden out of the White House and take over like redo. So that's that's pretty sad. From it's, two years it's ago? more sad than anything. From two years ago? Yes, he thinks, he still thinks that, you know, that, that all this massive fraud and shit. I think he's one of those people that tells a lie so much he starts believing in himself, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, like uh, they're so, they've told it so many times that if they took a lie detector test, there'd be no deception, even though it's total bullshit because they believe it themselves at this point. He got kicked off Twitter, made his own thing, the whole truth social thing, which we talked about, I think, in our first episode. <laughs> he did one truth on there and has completely abandoned his own Twitter that he invented and has only done one post the whole time it's been up uh, because it's such a failure. He doesn't want to uh, have it uh, taint his name any. So, yeah, all the all that work and all that crying, and he did one Tweet, one truth, whatever. And uh, that was it. He's abandoned his own project. Well, that's tenacity for you. I like it. Uh, so, fantastic. Just iron will there on his own Twitter program. That's great. I really admire a person that just gives up after one try. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, um, since the brain doesn't have pain receptors, Josh, brain surgery sometimes will be performed while the patient is actually awake. Yeah, yeah. That's a fun fact I knew. That's crazy that's, shit. That's disgusting, dude. You'd hear it. You'd hear, hear them working on your brain. Yeah, like I've seen video and stuff of people just sitting there, you know, and it's like, <clears throat> you know, you're going to be doing this little number the whole time. Every time you hear something, was that? What was that? That's so gross to me. I just that that is it reminds me of the Hannibal Hannibal Rising or Hannibal whatever whichever one it was. I can't remember which one where he's he's making Ray Liotta eat his own brain. Red Dragon. I can't remember which one it is. Hannibal. It was the second. Hannibal. One. Hannibal. And that's what it reminds me of. It's so that idea is so gross. Or the Simpsons where they ice cream scoop Homer's brain out of his head. And it, like, snaps off. Like, yeah, that just Dexter, seems ridiculous. Dexter Season 8, the brain surgeon, the guy that would, like, kill a victim and, like, pretty much ice cream scoop a certain section of the brain out and leave it for yeah. a doctor. Yeah, creepy yeah. shit. Creepy shit. Yeah, that, and so I, I saw that, and I was just like, that is that is next-level disgusting. Um, You know what else is disgusting? World-renowned, super, super military leader, French military leader, Napoleon Bonaparte, was buried without his penis. Did you know that? Did he lose it? I don't know where. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if somebody stole it or or what. I saw on Twitter uh, someone had made a comment because I got that fact from Uberfax, and it said, so Napoleon and his bone are apart. Oh, my <laughs> I, God. They beat Napoleon us to it. They apart. beat us to it. They beat us to that dick joke. Son of a uh, bitches. Uh, it's a whole new twist on Bill and Ted. What are they going to do? Like, are they, is it frozen? And they're going to revive it when they have the technology <laughs> to revive it? Cryogenically <laughs> frozen? Or he's frozen himself and he wakes up without his penis. He's like, oh, suck it, suck it, blue. Why do I, I don't even want to leave anymore. I don't have my penis. Oh. Suck it, blue balls. Suck it, blue, my pee-pee. Oh, how am I supposed to lead without my wiener? <laughs> I always thought he was overcompensating for his shortness, but it was yeah. something else all along. Yeah, he didn't have a dick. Uh, he, no wonder he was pissed off all the time. I'd be mad, too, if I didn't have a dick. Or if I didn't even know where my dick was, I'd be pissed. Dickless over here did it. Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> yes, it's he true. He just looks at you like, you motherfucker. <laughs> this man has no dick. Hey, um, 
Last fun fact of the night. Now, this one, I saved the best for last, okay? Last one? This is it? The last fun fact of the no night. More after, I'm, no more after this. This, this is as fun as... You there? <laughs> I'm here. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm on pins and needles and All right. Napoleon's dick. Let's go. All right. This is, I'm Vanessa Williams right now because I saved the best for last. Check this out. Abraham Lincoln was assassinated on the very same day that he established the Secret Service. See, wrap your mind around Alanis that. Morris, Alanis Morissette, you know, her song, Ironic. Mm-hmm. It's so stupid because it's really, her song should have been, isn't it inconvenient, don't you think? You know, but like if she had taken stuff like this story, her song would have made sense. Because that is like the definition of irony right there. <laughs> you know? It's not fair, though, to those Secret Service guys because that's the first day, man. That's that's like syllabus day in high school. <laughs> they just got well, their they syllabus. Inter- they were still being vetted. Yeah, they, they they didn't even know what the protocol was to deal with certain situations because it's day one. And instead of help training them, Abraham Lincoln goes to a goddamn play. Our American cousin. Yeah, and gets murdered by one of the actors in the play. John Wilkes Booth. What the <laughs> that hell? actor's a real pain in the back of the head. God, man. I watched this YouTube video the other day where... Um, there's like this channel where it shows interviews from like the 1800s. And there was this guy being interviewed and he was like 90 at the time. And he was at the play the night that Abraham Lincoln was murdered. He witnessed it. Wow. And he's talking about it. You can hear his first person account. That's awesome. That is, it is awesome. Did yeah. he try saying, Hey, look out. I you know what somebody probably should because back in the day back in the 1800s like to kill or the early 1900s to kill someone then they just have muskets so the guy's like trying to muzzle load <laughs> something <laughs> and loading powder and a ball and gunpowder you know paper wad and shit Abraham Lincoln didn't see it coming before he got his brains blown out that's his own fault he had plenty of time man no secret Tell service me. needed. No, one person in that audience was like, the president of the fucking United States is here. Fuck the play. And like, you know, just keep, you know, keeping an eye on the president. Not one person, you know. I'm surprised that, especially the way guns were back then, that John Wilkes Booth was able to kill him on the first shot because they were highly inaccurate weapons back then. They didn't shoot very straight. Those those ball guns and shit or whatever they had, those muzzle loaders. I want to say this, and I hope Master Evil doesn't make us watch it someday, but there's a movie called Abraham Lincoln vs. Zombies. Yeah. And I believe he gets bit at some point and hired somebody to shoot him so he wouldn't turn, and that was the twist at the end of the movie, and that's why he got assassinated. So, <laughs> so he hired somebody to kill him in a very public place, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so he wouldn't turn. every child at the play. Great thinking, Abe. Had to be in the head. I've got a movie pitch for you for the, for the Sci-Fi channel. If anybody from Sci-Fi is watching, our animator that's making our animated intro does stuff for the Sci-Fi channel, so maybe he can pass it along. Okay, picture this. Zombies and Jesus, right? Because Jesus is like the original zombie. He rose from the dead. But call it the second coming, okay? Instead of a two, it's a Z. And, you know, he's crucified, but, like, what? It, like whenever he went and saw the man in Lazarus and brought him back to life and gave him water and the dude came back to life, what it was is, like, mm-hmm. something, some meteor hit a stream or something, you know, and brought the zombie virus to Earth, and he got the water from there, and what he really did was brought this guy back to life, like, as an undead, and gets bit, mm-hmm. gets crucified later. Rises from the dead as a zombie. Zombie apocalypse. Biblical times. What do you think? I think you're going to have a hard time pitching that movie idea when you're in hell burning for all the blasphemy you just spewed out of your damn mouth right there. The second coming. If it happens, I want a, I want a paycheck. Second coming. All right. So uh, are you about to ruin my night? 
No, we're not going. Well, just about, but we're we're actually going to go in. We're going to go into horror news first. Okay, we got a couple, horror couple news. Headlines. We're going to yeah. talk about whores. Yeah, horror, uh, horror, news. horror, horror. Oh, the horror! Okay. First, first horror. These are just a couple quick, uh, quick hit sound bites. Uh, Courtney Cox, uh, who plays Gail Weathers in the Scream franchise, has officially signed back on for Scream Six. We are still waiting on a confirmation for Nev Campbell. Josh, what are your thoughts on uh, Courtney Cox signing on for Scream 6? <laughs> Just doesn't give a shit at all. Yeah, because you know who's not signing on for Scream 6? David Arquette. Jamie Kennedy. Uh, David, David Arquette. How s- Qu- Courtney Cox should have been the one gutted. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler I spoiled alert. it last time. All right. Well, we know how Josh <laughs> feels about that. Story number two for horror. It's story number two and actually the last horror. So, uh, now you got me. Horror. <laughs> um, Freddy's Nightmares, the TV show, Freddy's Nightmares, that was on in the late 80s, early 90s for two seasons. <clears throat> Forever, it was kind of like the holy grail of... Uh, Horror, horror TV shows because you couldn't find it anywhere. There's, it's not really on physical media, really anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, it's streaming for the first time ever. Uh, it was actually announced like two or three weeks ago. It's on an app called Screambox. Yep. And you can get Screambox on YouTube. You can get it on Amazon Prime. There's a couple other places you can get it. Um, I actually got the free trial to Screambox through Amazon Prime, uh, and I've actually been trying to binge watch every episode. What and uh, some of the episodes are really well done and dark and pretty decent and mm-hmm. uh, make sense. And some of them are really low budget and just the lighting's awful. The acting's awful. The plot makes no sense. The episodes will end without like a, a conclusive ending. You won't really know why the episode's ending because it doesn't, it just kind of ends. It's really odd. They, they, whoever wrote some of these episodes, didn't know how to end stories correctly. It's really weird. And Robert England, um, I did not that radio has anything to do with like actual TV or movies, but <clears throat> when I worked for Fox, uh, you would do, sometimes if you only had a certain amount of time to to rec- say you're going to do like thirty episodes or something of something, but you've got three hours to do wraparounds for, so you do like. 30 episodes worth of wraparounds in one day and they just edit it, you know, for whatever later down the road. So they'd knock all your shit out in like one day for 30 episodes down the road. It looked like Robert England, like he was only actually in like three full episodes, maybe four where he was the central character. Yeah. Other, otherwise he was kind of like the Crypt Keeper character. Yeah. Uh, introducing the stories and kind of talking, but he, he, he's, he's in these episodes like, one, two minutes an episode. I feel like he came in at the beginning of the season and shot like all those in like one day. They they, they all take place in Springwood though. Yeah. Like yes, on Elm do. Street. Yeah. Um, you know, and one, one episode, did you know that he wasn't there to do the wraparound? And uh, I cannot think of the guy's name. The trickster from Supernatural. He was really young at the time. Filled in for one episode of Freddy's Nightmares as Freddy Krueger. Really, I would love to see what episode that was. I, I, I've got to, I've got to binge watch it to find it. But you, uh, I was told that by somebody. It's a rumor, not been confirmed yet. I will find out for sure. Um, uh, but it's supposed to be really hard to tell. There's no speaking. It was just the face shot. Um, so I have to have to look that, into that. And that get might. Back to it. That might be possible, but I've seen most of the episodes the last few weeks, and it, it looks like Robert England almost in all of them. The first, the first episode of that show was pretty badass, though. We talked about that before. The first, the, uh, the, the pilot so, episode was pretty good, but after rewatching it as a thirty-eight-year-old man, <laughs> um, there's some glaring pot, plot holes. Uh, the first one being. That if you've watched all the movies, the continuity, like there's no, Nancy's parents aren't there when they burn him. 
There's a but none of those parents are there. All the ones that supposedly killed him. And then in the TV show, he's begging them to kill him. He wants them to kill him. He's asking them to do it because yeah. he's going to come back. Right. He's all I'm going to come back, blah, blah, blah. But in the movies, he does not want to be killed. OK, <laughs> he's taken off guard. So that's completely different. And also, he doesn't know he's coming back till he's being burned alive and the dream demons approach him. But in the TV show, he's like, oh, burn me because I'm going to come back. How the hell does he know he's going to come back? He's seen Freddy's dead. He, oh, OK. So he's so he has a hot t- Freddy Krueger has a hot tub time machine and he saw the lack of continuity in the TV show <laughs> and jumped to the film series. And, and he went okay. to court wearing his sweater and fedora and everything. I was okay. the, hey, I was just going to say something about that. He's in this Hannibal Lecter cage in court in Springwood. And they let him appear in court with his fedora, his dirty ass sweater. His hands are filthy. He's that's how he went to court. So they are. <laughs> he didn't show up in a dress shirt and khakis or anything. It's like it the Family like a- Guy episode where, you know, he's like in the sweater that's all itchy and stuff, gets all pissed because the building catches on fire and that, that's why he gets yeah. revenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's just a he's just a really nice guy. He just was given a gift, that nastiest, dirty sweater, and it itches. So then he makes claws to itch himself with, and then he catches on fire, and then he wants revenge because he actually got screwed over. Exactly, exactly. Um. Speaking of being screwed over and tortured, let's get into uh, Josh's favorite segment of the night, Slash Track Sports. <laughs> Chin up, pal. Don't be Donald Trump. Don't don't give up on the show. All right? Keep moving forward. If you're going through hell, why would you stop, Josh? Keep going, for, keep going through it. All right. All right. Good. Thumbs up. All right. After Michael Jordan... Scored a career high 69 points in a game. His teammate Stacy King was actually interviewed, and he he this is a quote he said: "I'll always remember tonight as the night that Michael Jordan and I combined to score 70 points." Was this baseball or basketball? This is basketball. Oh, okay. okay. Jordan scored 69 points for a career high, and Stacy Stacy King said, "I'll always remember tonight as the night we combined to score 70." And he got a free shot, I'm guessing. He got, he got like, a free throw. <laughs> um, and that's the way to look at it. That's Eat the only real sports limit. Yeah. Make lemonade. Exactly. That's what you're doing right now by trudging through the sports section. And you know what? This sports section right now is about to pick up for you. Because okay. both of these sports stories are going to be pro wrestling stories. Okay. That's real. That's Although, real yeah, not really happy ones, though. These are kind of okay. sad. Uh, everybody know well not everybody might not know uh, Scott Hall who played Razor Ramon or didn't play portrayed Razor Ramon the character on WWF and went to WCW as uh, Scott Hall with the NWO he's basically the reason that the Monday Night Wars even started he he portrayed a character who was supposed to be from the WWF when he signed with WCW and people weren't sure if he was actually a spy Wait, well, what's yeah. that look you gotta wait, man. Before all that, he he shook the wrestling world's foundations as the diamond stud. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and Kevin Nash the was awesome. Wrestling world diamond stud Scott Hall. That was pre Razor Ramon. Okay. Where he was but wearing the overalls with one strap, hold, hold his overalls up, and he's got that. He's got that freaking uh, taco meat coming out of his overalls, his chest hair. He did throw the first. He did. He did the first shot in the Monday Night Wars was Scott Hall. You are correct, sir. And so, yeah. Scott Hall uh, passed away last Monday um, at the age of sixty-three, and he apparently had some. He had some hips. Hip. He had a hip injury, and he was like MIA for like two or three days, maybe even longer than that. He wasn't able to get to a phone because he like hurt his hip and he was laying in the middle of his house, like on the floor and DDP showed up to do a welfare check uh, and found Scott laying, you know, lying on the floor. Can't get to a phone, can't move, can't do anything. 
They take him to the hospital. They perform the hip surgery. They're trying to fix him up. He ended up getting blood clots, which probably had a lot to do with the fact that he was immobile for like two or three days, right? I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so he had complications. He had blood clots. The blood clots got loose, went to his lungs. He had three heart attacks. After that, he was put on life support. And it seems like the day after they announced that he was on life support, they announced that when his family arrived at the hospital, they were going to take him off life support. So then Scott Hall, being Scott Hall, being the badass that he was, because he fought his entire life to like get sober. And like, he, if anyone knows about Scott Hall, they know when he was a bouncer at a strip club before he was a wrestler, he had to kill a guy in the parking lot that like jumped him. Um, so he had a lot of demons. But Scott Hall even when he was taken off life support, survived almost the rest of the entire day. He was still trying to live before he succumbed to the three heart attacks. And it seems like every time we do an episode lately, we're talking about somebody from our childhood that influenced us that we really cared about has died. Every this, episode. It's Bob like every Saget. episode. Yeah. Yeah. Bob Louis, Saget, Nico. Yeah. It's every episode and I'm getting sick of it. And I just want you to know, I want everybody that's watching this episode to know, Scott Hall was a huge influence on me. Uh, I remember him being on Jerry Springer. He went, he went on Jerry Springer as, as Razor Ramon. There was two kids who had HIV. He gave them the Intercontinental title belt off his waist. He gave them both a pep talk. He gave them tickets to WrestleMania. He invited them. All expenses paid to WrestleMania. Um, there's all these stories about Scott Hall being a uh, terrible person. There, there was this one story, where Josh, where it said Scott Hall refused to participate in this like meet and greet and like photo swap for this kid who was dying of cancer. And yeah, he did refuse to do it, but it was because the kid who was needed to help wasn't actually there. It was just some adults trying to get photos of Scott Hall and like autographs and Scott Hall felt weird about it. He's like, the kid's not even here. Yeah. They were trying, they, they, for all we know, they were trying to like use him and use a fake story to get stuff from him. And they spun it to where he was an asshole. If, if you want to see, if you don't know a lot about Scott Hall, I recommend watching The Resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts. Because that movie, is, is that documentary is as much about Jake finding his way as it is about Scott Hall finding his mm-hmm. path. What happens in that movie led to both of those guys finally being inducted into the Hall of Fame getting their lives together. And, you know, Scott Hall was a trailblazer. Uh, I love, I love, uh, a thing him and him and raised him and, uh, Nash said back in WCW, he, uh, Rick Flair and Roddy Piper said, we paved the road for you guys. And Scott and, and Scott and, uh, and Nash said, yeah, and we, we went through and filled in all the potholes, you know, uh, they might have paved the highway, but all the all the problems that those old guys left behind, Nash and Hall came through and fixed. Yeah, and, Gar- Hall and Nash were basically responsible for lighter schedules, guaranteed money. Um, they put the power back in the wrestlers' hands for the first time ever. To be honest with you, yeah. um, they did a lot of they used their leverage as stars to to be able to help themselves out financially and their families, and then also help out all the other wrestlers they worked with. So, you know, kudos to them. And Scott Hall was, when I was a kid, I remember once, I didn't have a lot of good Christmases, but I remember one Christmas in particular. My mom got me a present, and it was like four WWF Hasbro figures. One of them was Razor Ramon. Then I had Nails, Crush, and Kamala. Those were the four. Those were the four. Nails of all people. The guy that tried to kill Vince yeah. McMahon. Yeah, in his office. That's and another story Vince, for another said episode. Vince McMahon made a pass at him or whatever. But anyway, um, those were the four figures. And I just remember getting those figures. And, and it, the Razor Ramon one was so cool because it came with the gold. And it, it really looked like him. And Best on. So, yeah, with the vest. He was in the red and black. It was just such a great memory. And I have so many great memories of, of basically my entire childhood. From, 10, from the age of 10... With um, the, the the what is it the new the what was it called the ne- the new generation new superstar what was it called in the early nineties Razor Scott Hall uh, Kevin Nash one two three kids Shawn Michaels the, the new, new generation. generation the new generation 
Yeah. So from the new generation, from the age of ten, all Rosie, yeah, oh yeah, uh, Quang, all those guys, <laughs> yeah, all those guys, Bastion Booger, all those guys, to the NWO with the Attitude, you know, yeah. Attitude Era, and Scott Hall was there the entire time. So Scott was entertaining me and making me happy from the age of ten till the time I was like, freaking twenty eight years old. So I just want to go on record and say thank you, Scott Hall, for yeah, thank all you. those great things. My child, dude, my childhood was was rough, and he was a big part of a lot of really happy moments in a not so happy childhood. So Scott Hall's a great guy, and I don't care. What? And you know what? He had a lot of demons. He did a lot of stupid shit. He drank. He did pills and stuff. I had issues with drinking big time, and I took a lot of inspiration from Resurrection of of Jake the Snake because if Scott Hall was gonna fight, I was gonna fight. It was all around the same time period for me when I got sober. 2015, 2016 was when I was first trying to get sober. So I don't judge anybody. 12 years, 12 years off pain pills right here. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, both of us, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of me. And uh, Scott Hall's going to be missed. Scott Hall was like the new generation's Roddy Piper. And Roddy Piper was to me what sounds like Scott Hall was to you. Like he is, Roddy Piper was my biggest inspiration in my time in wrestling and my heel character. I know it's crazy to believe that I played an asshole, but I did and I did it well. Um, I'm calling myself an asshole. That was like a joke. Just anybody checking. Um, He's an asshole. I'm an asshole. But yeah, uh, Roddy Piper. I think I think Roddy Piper passed at 63 years old too. Um. It's it's we've lost so many great ones. Scott Hall and Roddy Piper, I think, have so much in common. Uh, Roddy Piper was like the old school version, and Scott Hall was the you know the new generation's version. And uh, I just cannot believe Scott's gone, man. I, mean, I can't believe Roddy's gone. I thought Roddy would be around at like ninety years old, given reacts to be people. I just think you know, that, and I, that I, I, I was not away. That's all. I just think that 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 lifestyle is so hard to be on the road all the time and taking bumps all the time and being away from your family and a, a lot of guys back then, especially in the eighties and nineties, there wasn't. There was there wasn't really any internet. There was there was no like amazing video game systems. There was no streaming. There wasn't anything like that. So what are you gonna do? They went out and chased women and got drunk and did drugs. And ch- I mean, I'm not excusing it. It's just a different time. Yeah, it is. And, you know, you asked me ten years ago, take a guess what's gonna kill Scott Hall in 2022. I would not have said hip surgery and blood clots. No, I uh, would have said he would have been dead from a drug overdose. Yeah, or, or you know, you know, got so shit faced he choked on his own vomit or something. Mm-hmm. The guy did so much for the world of wrestling, and for so many people that watched it and grew up with it, he was a hero to so many people, including you. And you know, he really stepped up and cleaned up. And the last few years of his life, he was an amazing role model for people that are going through a similar thing. And if you're if you're dealing with addiction, you know um, there there's so many resources to reach out to and 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 get help. And you're looking at two guys right here uh, that have been there. And this is you know we're here now, and we we made it through it. You can too. Uh, let Scott Hall be an inspiration. That guy had a lot of demons, and uh, he really so did. We. 360. <laughs> yeah, we did too. It's so still, we. you know. And yeah, it, it's never too late. It's never too late to turn it around. Not until you, if you're still breathing and you got a heartbeat, you still got a chance. Start with the man in the mirror or woman in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Uh, that song was one of the things that did it for me, actually. So. Well, um, the last sports story of the night is actually wrestling related too, and it's related to uh, someone that was in the clique with him. We're going to talk about Triple H for a second. Uh, Triple H actually announced today on uh, ESPN that he is retired now, officially. He's done. National news. Uh, Triple H has officially retired due to health issues. 
Uh, he went into heart failure after a bout with viral pneumonia. Uh, he actually has a defibrillator uh, installed in his chest now. And Triple H was quoted as saying there were moments where he didn't think he was going to make it or not. So he can't, he's got a defibrillator. He can't take bumps with that. Uh, he basically was on death's door. Um, but he's alive. He's back. And uh, thank God for that. Because Triple H gets a bad rap. There was a lot of guys he didn't put over. He was involved in the Montreal screw job with Bret Hart. But, I mean, there's two sides to every story. Him and Sean were trying to do what's best for the company at the time because they were sticking around. Bret was going to WCW. Triple H has put himself over other guys that storyline didn't make much sense. Like, not really sure why Sting had to lose at WrestleMania to a retired already Triple H, a part-time Triple H. That didn't make any sense. Yeah, uh, it, it didn't make any sense when CM Punk had to lose to him. When CM Punk was the hottest name in the business at the time, that made no sense to a part timer. There's a lot of stuff that didn't make sense. But all that being said, there's a lot of great things Triple H did, and Triple H built NXT up from the ground up and did a great job with it until they destroyed it recently. <clears throat> um, and it wasn't him who destroyed it; it was Vince. Uh, and Bruce Pritchard and all those other guys that are <laughs> Kevin Fuck Dunn. Bruce Fuck Bruce yeah. Pritchard. Fuck all those guys, you. you know, that are doing that crap, ruining NXT. But anyway, Triple H had a great career, a really long career. Had had the world championship. I mean, how many times was he the world champion? Like 12, 13 times? Yeah, he made himself champion at least a dozen times, yeah. <laughs> made himself. I mean, he, he won it at least a dozen times. He, um, no, okay. All right, in all seriousness, if you think WWE is bad or has been bad over the past, like, decade or so, without, without Paul Triple H doing what he was doing, it would have been so much worse. It really would have. He, he, he put a lot of work into the younger guys and younger women and gave them a place to really showcase their talent. So they're, they're, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. Well, one thing that Paul did, Triple H, that a lot of people don't know about is he's responsible for re- building another bridge for a lot of superstars that were on bad terms with the WWE. Uh, Ultimate, Ultimate, Warrior, Ultimate Warrior is in the Hall of Fame because of Triple H, 100% because of Triple H. There's no other reason why Ultimate Warrior is in Good graces with the W. I mean, Ultimate Warriors passed away, but they have the Warrior Award named after him. He went into the Hall of Fame. uh, Total 180 with the company. Uh, There's multiple people that Triple H was able to. Yeah, yeah, there's there's just a ton of ton of talent that wouldn't have been able to make their way back to the Hall of Fame if it wasn't for Triple H. And also the Attitude Era. Triple H was a huge part of that. DX, when Shawn Michaels had his back injury, the next day on Raw, Triple H brought in the New Age Outlaws and 123 Kid, and they were off and running. And I think that version of DX might have been more popular than the one with Shawn in China. Oh, yeah. That's the one I remember more. Oh, you didn't know? Yeah. So, Triple H, uh, and when he came back in 2002 from the quad injuries, the double quad aggression. Yeah, he came back. I mean, he was a top guy for two decades. So him and Bischoff, him and Bischoff played well together too, man. I gotta Triple say, H, dude, Triple H was a classic. Like he was straight edge before CM Punk was straight edge. Triple H didn't drink, didn't do drugs. Uh, no, he had a little bit of Hogan in him. Triple H was always, yeah, he did. He was trying to keep his spot. Yeah, and if you're not in it. You were in the wrestling business, so if you don't try to keep your spot, someone else is going to take it. And exactly. they're going to take the money, and they're going to take your position on the card. That's why I don't have a problem with Hulk Hogan. The way I see it, he looked out for number one. It's kind of funny that the two people that are most known for that are both Triple H. Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Um, oh, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, too. Uh, <laughs> when he don't get his way, he just oversells. Dude, Shawn... <laughs> I'll put him over, but I'm not going to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to like it. Um, let's get into he, he was a clean guy. He didn't do drugs or alcohol, no. man. No, and Triple H. Triple H is a lot. There's a lot of things to admire about Triple H. Yeah. 
And um, I don't like the guy either, and I'm very green with you. I do not like the man, the character. But the man seems like he's got a lot of respect for the business and wants to do what's best for the business and the people mm-hmm. that, that paved the way. Like Jake, the, like you said, Jake the Snake, uh, Scott Hall, all of those guys can thank Triple H for being for finally hey, being a part of the Hall of Fame. He's Triple H is the one who made those phone calls to those guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, let's get into some headlines to end the show. What do you think? Headlines? I'll try. Yeah, let's do it. All right, hold on tight. We're gonna we're gonna end the show with some headlines. Um, so this one's not really a headline. But it, it kind of is, and just kind of bear with me on <laughs> Let's this. Let's get one. into headlines, but the first one, not a headline. <laughs> not a headline. Okay, <laughs> so I saw this on Twitter, okay? I follow an account that sells or auctions off old VHS tapes, okay? So we've talked about some of these on the show before. Yes. So if you have a mint copy of a VHS movie from the 80s or the 70s or 90s, and it's still wrapped, it's mint, you can make a lot of money, okay? So First Blood... The first Rambo movie on VHS recently sold for basically a small fortune at auction. Now, that, that's important, and that's very cool, but that's not the headline. The headline to me, Josh, that's not what caught my attention. As I'm looking at the post, I see the tagline for the movie on the box, okay? Okay. And it says, this time he's fighting for his life. Big, bold letters, exclamation point, right on the front of the box. And the fucking first thing I thought was, wait a second, John Rambo, Vietnam, absolute killing machine, uh, what, like literally the most, uh, Colonel Troutman himself says that uh, John Rambo is the most sophisticated, most wonderful killer ever, right? That mm-hmm. he loves it. The first time he's fighting for his life is from sheriffs in Oregon, uh, Vietnam, he wasn't fighting for his life. He's fighting for his but- country. <laughs> okay. Uh, what the hell? What? I, that's the first thing I thought. This is the stupidest tagline I've ever seen in my life. This time, Vietnam was nothing. Wait till he goes to a small town in Monoma County. Now shit's gonna get real. Rural county flashbacks is what he's gonna have to worry about in, in old age. Dude, flashbacks to the farmland. I hated Brian Dennehy in that movie. He played the sheriff. Uh, if you guys don't know who Brian Dennehy is, if you haven't seen the first Rambo, I'm sure you've seen Tommy Boy. He's Tommy Boy's father, okay? He is an asshole to Sylvester Stallone in that movie. Stallone is going through town. He's going to visit an old war buddy. Uh, spoiler alert, his friend is dead. Uh, so he's sad. He's walking from the friend's house. He's going to go get dinner, and he's going to leave town. Well, the sheriff sees Rambo walking down the road in his army coat, and offers him a ride out of town. And basically says, you need to leave town. You can't eat here. You can eat at the town, the next town. And Rambo says, why, why are you doing this to me? And shit ensues. Rambo revolts. He gets arrested. He takes on the whole town <laughs> by himself with no weapons. All because he wanted to eat, basically. And Brian Dennehy wasn't going to let him. So I hate Brian Dennehy in that movie. Well, you know... He's, he's Sylvester Stallone is really short, and in all fairness, the restaurant he wanted to eat at, kids yeah. ate free on Tuesdays. Oh, so he, he wasn't as tall as a tentacle, like at the carnival? Yeah, yeah. You have to be so tall to ride Space Mountain? Yeah, yeah. I, all I want, you guys had to push it. If it wasn't for that king shit cop, all I wanted to do was eat something. Boy, did they, they didn't realize when they didn't serve him what was going to happen. He was going to blow up their fucking town, son. Yeah. Shit hit the fan. You know what else hit the fan, Josh? Story number two. <laughs> Ohio woman calls 911 to complain about her KFC order. Well, who else you going to call? <laughs> um, <laughs> police in Ohio had to remind the public not to call 911 <laughs> in non-emergency situations last week after a woman called to inform them that her order did not contain all the chicken that she had just paid for. She paid for eight pieces and only received four. So she got one chicken instead of two. You know what? I, I ordered an eight piece the other day and they only gave me seven pieces. Are you telling me that I should have called 911 to correct this? You should have called 911. Well, no, not in Ohio because they would have verbally berated you for doing it because you're not supposed to do it, Josh. But 
I think I'm on your side and the lady's side, and I'll tell you why. This is an emergency. She could still be hungry after dinner. That's an emergency. She could be hungry. And if she eats too late at night because she's still hungry, she could gain weight. You don't want to eat eat too late. So this is an emergency. I'm on her and your side. Yeah, it's KFC. So as soon as you eat it, it's going to go right through you. You're going to be hungry again in five seconds. That's why she needed the second chicken. And it wasn't there. The second chicken wasn't there. Dude, KFC is like with Taco Bell, which, by the way, they're both owned by the Yum Corporation. Uh, and Pizza, Pizza Hut. Hut. Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, KFC are all owned by the same company. Which is coincidentally, Josh, I'm not a rich man. I don't have health insurance. I went to the free clinic one time to get a checkup because I was constipated. Went to the doctor, told him my what was going on. Doctor said, I see you don't have insurance. I'm going to write this prescription out for you uh, for constipation. Take it to your nearest KFC or Taco Bell. Get it filled. It's for an eight-piece. You'll be, you'll be flowing uh, with turds in no time. Yeah. Because every time I eat at one of those places, I have to shit <laughs> bad. Taco Bell, KFC, 30 minutes later, I got to take a dump, bud. Great F meats. Oh, great. zebra. Zebra and elephant are in their tacos. <laughs> this isn't a chicken leg. This looks this looks like a pigeon leg. <laughs> uh, Josh, before you go to sleep, to end episode number four, you look like you're about ready to go night night. Oh, no, I was just kind of, okay. I'm trying to find the right angle here. I'm good. I'm wide awake. You know what I think? You know what I think it is? Your hair is so long now that it's weighing your head down, and you're like an infant. You can't even hold your head up anymore because of the weight of hair on your head. I've been, I've just been trying to find the right angle here for. Dude, look at you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be you right now. Your head looks off kilter because your luscious locks are so heavy. You're like a baby trying to adjust its head for the very first time, dude. For your birthday, I'm gonna get you some. Uh, I'm gonna get you some of those butterfly clips. Sweet. Yeah, for your hair, dude. Uh, and we, yeah, and we can put the Slash Tracks logo on them and sell them uh, at the merch <laughs> shop. Butterfly clips, 80 Slasher Librarian. Get them while they're hot. Anybody watching, if you are an artist and would like to uh, do some commission work for merch, let us know in the comment section below. Uh, last, last story of the night. Uh, this is going to end the show, Josh. Biotech company offers money for your poop in Arizona. Just mine? Anybody's poop. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Anybody's poop. Uh, Series Therapeutics, a biotech company, has opened a donor collection facility, donor collection facility, to collect poop for cash in Arizona. Pay is $25 a sample and all the way up to $75 per sample. So you'd probably need KFC or Taco Bell beforehand to get the big money, I think. Can we get an 800 song? Remember the Cars for Cars for Kids or whatever, you know? Can we get it like Crap for Kids? You no. Know? It's J.G. Wentworth. 100 Crap for Cash. It's the, I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth. 877 Cash Now. I really I have a big debt. Time. I'll sell you my crap right now. Something like that. You know, we, we, we could ride him in jingle. I am really constipated, but I need cash now. Um, so good. So what does this say? Good nature. The company needs healthy adults aged 18 to 50. And they also say that a donor, a really good donor, productive donor, can make up to $1,500 a month from just donating crap. That month. I know someone who could be a perfect donor, and they would be saying, well, I've never seen a donation this big in my entire life. Everyone's saying it's the biggest donation they've ever seen ever before. Okay. Dude, every time you make a Trump reference or a Trump joke, it should be like Captain Kangaroo, and there should be ping pong balls dropped on your head. They're slime. <laughs> So. You just like uh, uh, you can't do that on television. Every time you make a Trump reference, your ass gets slimed. You'd like it though, because you could just slick your hair back even more with it. Yeah, exactly. It's like a helmet. <laughs> um, you get done. So your your wife is like, "You're full of shit, Josh," and you're like, "Nuh uh, I just got back from work. There's no way I'm full of shit. I just got paid. <laughs> no way." 
Because I work for the biotech company that pays me for my shit. But well, you donated plasma. I'm sure there was some plasma in there, but dude, you know. there's some there's some nights like that I used to drink the next day that like I could have been a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been a millionaire. Uh, could have been great. Uh, and with that said, Josh, I think it's time to end the episode. Episode number four is done. Wow, four yeah. episodes already. Yeah, Slash Tracks Action News. We need this one to break a thousand views in five days, people. Come on. <laughs> and you got to remember, we are being forced to watch bad movies on Slash Tracks, and Master Evil's forcing us to put on this news program for him. So please like, comment, and subscribe below so we don't get tortured. If you don't like this video, comment on it and subscribe to the channel. Master Evil is going to take our four-screen Hulu account and knock it down to the one-screen Hulu account, and then we have to take turns watching shit on Hulu. Okay, please don't do that to us. Um, with that being said, I w- so since we're trying to we're begging for comments right now, I want to say one thing. I had an idea, and I've talked about it with Josh before, but this is the first time the pe- the public has actually heard this idea. Josh and I are thinking about possibly riffing on stuff other than horror movies every once in a while and an idea that we had was lifetime movies uh give us your thoughts on that what do you think you think there's any movies that you'd like to see us riff in particular do you like the idea what other genres of movies would you like to see us riff on uh leave a comment uh you know down below and then we'll get back to you and one good thing about josh and i we're not like a lot of YouTube channels. If we see that you commented, we will definitely write you back and talk to you because yeah. we like we like to hear from you guys. We I love interacting with uh, people that watch the show. I think it's really fun. So, yeah, it really it, it, basically anybody that contacts me, Josh, on social media about the show, I will talk to them. He'll stalk you like yeah, straight up. Stalk you'll make you. a new fan for life. I'll be your fan. I'll be at your window. Yeah, at night as you're changing. If there's a if there was a MySpace and I could have top eight friends, you'd be in it. I would put you in the top eight. At least at eight. Yeah, but don't piss me off because back in the old days, I passive aggressively <laughs> would move my friends up and down the list of the top eight. So you, you might be pissed at you, but I wouldn't tell you. I'd just move you from five down to eight, and you'd have to find it out yourself. <laughs> oh my goodness, Josh in the Thank show. We all did that. Josh in the show. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Tune in next time for more late-breaking. Usually, we're very late getting to the news. You've probably already heard it by that point. But it's Slash Tracks Action News. Say goodnight, Alex. Goodnight, Alex. Goodnight, everybody. We'll see you next time. Mahalo.